Hi, it's Laura, and today I'm going to be showing you how I made a quilt version of Vincent Van Gogh's The Starry Night. The Starry Night has always been, of course, one of my favorite paintings. Very basic, I know. But one of the reasons why I like it so much is that, for lack of a better phrase, easy to replicate. Not saying that I am like this fantastic artist that can just create masterpieces, but his style, the expressionist style, is very easy to kind of emulate in your own sort of way. I've actually recreated the Starry Night several times, once on a cookie, on a paper plate, probably on paper somewhere, and now I'm using fabric as my medium. This quilt took me a little bit over a month and it has been in planning ever since September, so I am finally done with it and I'm so glad I'm done with it because holy moly so much time so much effort very tedious I like tedious things but boy this was testing my limits <laughs> I actually broke probably seven machine needles making this which is an insane number of needles to break on your machine when you're doing any kind of project I'm very excited that this project is done and I can finally share it with you because I'm using fabric instead I'm going to be using bunch of tiny little pieces of scrap fabrics, various other fabrics that I find at the thrift store to recreate this masterpiece. You're probably thinking, well Laura, isn't that going to fray a lot? The answer is yes. <laughs> it will fray over time, but I think that just kind of sets the tone for the piece. It's made out of scraps. In the future, if a scrap piece falls off, I can always just replace it with something else, and I think that's just the nature of the quilt blanket duvet, and that's the nature of the original painting too. That's enough of me talking, let's go ahead and I'll show you how I did it. I decided to make my pattern by taking an image of the Starry Night, posterizing it so that it was more simple. I just put my posterized version back into my photo editor and I pulled out some of the colors that I saw and this color palette helped me choose the fabrics when I was at the thrift store. I decided how big I wanted my duvet to be, which was dependent on the size of the weighted blanket that I got, which was 6 by 4 feet. I had to scale up my posterized photo of the Starry Night, so there are probably easier ways to do this, you put a grid on your image and then you cut it all up and you print out each of the little grid boxes then you tape them all together you should have a two scale version of your pattern so I just did this in Microsoft Word And I printed out all of the sheets of paper, trimmed them down, taped them together, so I was left with basically a 6 by 4 foot posterized version of the Starry Night. And I did this in black and white because there was no point in wasting all of that ink. I basically divided the Starry Night into the main subjects, large, black, darker colored subjects on the far left, which might be a tree, the large, swirly wind pattern, the moon, the stars, and then the various types of grounds that we have, background, the middle ground, and the foreground, as well as the little buildings like the chapel. Then I just cut them out, I used those as actual pattern pieces. So I did just want to pop back in here and say that, yeah, I did use all thrifted fabrics for this. I didn't have to buy any fabrics new. I really think that that makes this piece interesting both because, you know, it will never be able to be replicated and you can kind of create your own version of it with whatever kind of thrifted fabrics you can find at your own store. Also, this was a really great project for using all of my scrap pieces. If you're a crafter like me, then you probably have tons and tons of scrap pieces of fabric. And I was able to put the even the tiniest scraps to use. Just think of all of the different places that each tiny piece of fabric had to come from. And that's why I think this really fits the whole expressionist painting style really well.
Okay, we're on the ground, which is good. It's important to stay grounded. <laughs> this is so stupid. Hello. So this is my pile of fabric scraps. I was going to count them just for kicks and giggles, but I decided that I don't need any more kicks and giggles than I already have. So let's go ahead and continue to work on this massive project. If you've ever tried to repaint the Starry Night, you will realize that it's a lot of overlapping of colors because it's an expressionist painting. Likewise, what I'm going to aim to do is to just put these all down, layer them, and then sew them all. So in high school, one of the best art things that I ever learned was when I was doing my final project, Project. It was a series of nine different acrylic paintings. I was working on them individually like one by one I would do the sketch and then I do the grisaille and then I would do all the layering and I would finish each painting by itself But then my teacher was like hey, that's not efficient. So if you're an artist and you're wondering how to be more efficient and to create more unity throughout all of your compositions, here is the hot tip. Don't work on each of the thing one by one. Do it all as a cohesive unit. So what does that mean in terms of this project? I think it would be better if I went ahead and laid out all of the different overlapping pieces instead of trying to just sew them on individually. I'm going to go to Walmart real quick, get some temporary spray adhesive for fabric, and then I'm going to just basically lay all of these out after I glue them down. Then I'm going to sew them down. That way it will be more efficient. I won't be working by piece by piece, which could be frustrating and take a fucking long time. Wish me luck. <laughs> Oh my god, what is you doing? Are you doing a binky? <gasps> Are you doing a binky? A half binky? <laughs> Quick rabbit break. He likes licking the couch. Do you think I should tell him that it's leather? I mean, he is a vegan, so he would probably like to know that. Ah, it's okay, I'll just let him eat it. Current progress. <laughs> Another update. I have now finished the sky as far as like gluing down all of the pieces. I know that it looks really rough, um, but I'm not panicking. Now that I have like all of the pieces glued down, the whole thing is like really sticky. The whole thing is really sticky. I'm going to take this whole thing and I'm just gonna try to do some free motion quilting following a wavy pattern. And then after, wow, look at the stuff on my fingers. That is nasty. Anyway, so I'm gonna do like free motion quilting. After I have sewn all of the sky pieces, then I'm going to wash it. Uh, this stuff is very sticky. The whole thing is really sticky. And because I just resulted to spraying it and then sticking pieces down rather than like spraying each piece, I'm going to see if I can gently wash it after I have sewn it down and that'll make it softer. Then what I'm gonna do after that is like for these big pattern pieces, I'm going to go ahead and do the same kind of thing, gluing down like individual pieces onto this thing. And then I'll sew it using once again, more swirly free motion quilting. And then I'll be left with this big piece and then I'll just sew the whole piece on at once. So I'm hoping, fingers crossed, that this will work. <laughs> update. This sucks. This sucks so much. Oh, oh my god. god. Where do I even begin? Well, you see, I think my first mistake was using was using spray adhesive. Honest to god, spray adhesive is the most useless piece of that I have ever attempted to craft with. I hate it so much. I'm gonna say this on record. This is probably, if not, the worst Elmer's Craft Bond multi-purpose spray adhesive I've ever tried in my entire life. Ah! It's an aerosol, so it gets everywhere. It's sticky when you don't want it to be sticky, and it's not sticky when you do want it to be sticky. The whole thing is really sticky. The thing gets easily clogged because it's a glue, so yeah, it's not, it's a no for me. Second of all, oh my god. 
this is gonna take forever. So I'm in the process of quilting the wave kind of stitches all the way like on this. You wouldn't think it would take that long, but because the pieces aren't sticking down, because the glue is horrible, things just t taking forever. And then since it's also like gluey, then the glue gets on my needle and then it's hard to thread the needle because there's glue in the thing and then- Stop it. Get some help. <sighs> I love sewing. Oh, also, the reason why this sucks so much because I don't have a long arm sewing machine. When you quilt, you usually have like a special quilting machine that allows you to do stuff like free motion quilting, which this isn't actually free motion, nor is it actually quilting. An actual quilting machine lets you do free motion stuff, which means you're not really limited by a presser foot, as far as I understand it. It literally has a long arm, so the arm is like this long instead of like this short. When you're sewing something, you have unlimited space theoretically like on this side, but you have <laughs> this amount of space to put your other fabric. I'll see you in like 10 hours. <laughs> Yay! I finally finished stitching all of the little pieces on here and when you flip it over it looks really crazy it's like the absolute mad lad that I am Enough horsing around, I have been thinking about it and this is taking way too long. Whilst I was sewing diligently all of the tiny little pieces for the background on the sky, I got the brilliant idea because I am so smart. This would go so much faster if I just used two simple materials. Pinking rotary cutter and some lightweight fusible interfacing. This is a pinking blade, which means it's like all wavy. Right. It's like a pizza cutter. That's gonna go so much faster because I won't have to pink everything by hand with the fusible interfacing. My idea here to arrange all of my little pieces the way I need them to be then I'm going to iron them all so that they're all together and I won't have to use that god-awful spray adhesive once they're all fused together then I can just pick up the piece and put it on my blanket and sew it down let's hope it works out Currently made this swoopy thing. So I'm just going to pick it up, iron some fabric on the back, and then I'm just gonna go down like I did over here with the stitching and just follow the line of the curve. Yay.
just couldn't resist. I had to start putting all the little pieces together just to see what it would look like and oh my god. So this is some trim that I found. I'll talk more about that in a bit. All I did yesterday was basically make all of these different stars. I'm just going to do some concentric stitching like I did with the swirlies. Then I will sew each of them to their proper place. For the stitching on the stars, I'm gonna be using this golden thread and this equally golden bobbin. <laughs> how gross I look right now but I just thought of the perfect joke and there will literally be no other time when I can do this joke so you take the moon and you take the sky I think the original lyrics are you take the moon and you take the sun but I don't have a sun I just have various other stars I'm just gonna do some stitching on the moon and then we will stitch the moon to the sky <laughs> happens to other creative people but whenever I'm working on a project I always have three other projects that I think of whilst working on my current one then I just feel this anxiety of like oh my gosh I need to complete this project so I could start the other three it's never ending because when I finally do complete this to my satisfaction film the video and edit the video and upload the video then I have the three other projects that I want to do so then I gotta like pick which one I want to do and so then I do that and then while I'm doing that one I'll think of more projects that I want to do and it's just like never ending. My brain never stops. I'm always thinking about creativity. But anyway, I'm just resting now on the floor because I don't want to have to cut more pieces of fabric. There's so many goddamn pieces of fabric. There's at least a thousand pieces already on this quilt. If I'm 60% through, then that means... A thousand is 60%. Oh wait, hold on, okay, I'm seeing the proportions. So you have 60 over 100 is equal to 1,000 over X. So now we're going to do 100 times 1,000, which would be 100,000 divided by 60. Hey Siri! Okay, 60 goes into 100, one time, one time 60 is 60, 100 minus 60 is 40. So then you have six times, uh, so it goes into 400, six times. Um, um, so you have one six. Six hundred and sixty-six more pieces. The number of the beast. I'm so proud of myself. Maybe in two more weeks time I'll be done with this. I've completed the farthest most point of the landscape. Now I just have this big piece to deal with and then of course the big central dark subject that's on the far left of the image. I'm going to separate these pattern pieces, do the same thing that I did for like all the other things, cut a base piece that's the shape and then I'll just start gluing some more fabric pieces on, quilting them in place and then so so so. So so. So like I hate this project and I also love it. It validates my hoarding tendencies towards scrap pieces and fabric. If you're a crafty person, you know what I mean. sirens go by, shall we? Okay, 
I hope you've been keeping track how many outfits I've worn throughout this whole thing. This has officially taken me three weeks to get to this point. I have no idea how many pieces of fabric are on this. I wish I had been counting. I'm really curious, but I'm not about to sit here and try to figure it out. My guess is that it is anywhere between 3,000 and 5,000. Definitely more than 2,000, but I'm, I think it's probably leaning towards 5,000. All sewed down, all in place. I'm only a little bit insane. The next part of this is I get to use this fun trim. I have never used trim before. I don't know her but she's pretty, so we're gonna use her. Not words to live by. I bought it and I was really confused because apparently trim comes bound on both sides. I hypothesized that that is because it makes it easier to install. I'm guessing that you sew on the, the thicker bound side. I'm going to sew this trim right sides together on the edge so that when you flip it over, it's pretty. I'm gonna do that all around. Then after I do that, I'm going to elongate this piece basically by sewing this rectangle of fabric on the end. This is to help create like the envelope shape on my duvet. Open it and close it to put take your weighted blanket in and out. Then we can put the backing on this thing. We're in the home stretch now. Let's go ahead and finish this project up. Oh my god, I'm never doing this again. <laughs> I'm never doing this again. This is so annoying. I ran out of trim and I only have eight inches left. I made it to the finish line and then... So I'm gonna go buy some more trim. Okay, we are finally at the last step in making this duvet blanket cover quilt thing to wash it. Now, because the thing was so big and I don't have like a big table to work on quilts, I was basically working on this thing on the floor the entire time. I'm imagining that it's probably quite dirty or at least dirty to the point where I wouldn't want to sleep with it. Give her the old razzle dazzle, just a wash. Gonna do it in my bathtub because uh, why am I doing it in my bathtub? I don't, I don't know why I'm doing it in my bathtub. I could just do it in my, I was about to say dishwasher. That's not right. I'm having an existential crisis. Washing machine. Okay, new plan. I'm going to wash my duvet thing in my washing machine and I'm going to be using fabric softener, especially since there's like all those little pieces of glue. So hopefully some fabric softener will make this duvet all snuggly again. Let's do that and hope that I can regain at least two more brain cells in the process. Time to finally see what the finished project looks like. I'm going to lay out my duvet inside out. Then I'm going to put my weighted blanket on top of it, tie all the little thingies so that it's all situated and nice, and then I'll flip her inside out again. Let's go ahead and I'll do that. 
So I was gifted a weighted blanket at Christmas and that is the primary drive behind me wanting to make this duvet. I did mention earlier that I had planned this since September, which is also true, but I just didn't know that I wanted it to be a weighted blanket until I got my weighted blanket. The weighted blanket that I got is by Polyfill, which is a very common brand that sells sewing stuffing. One of their newest products is the weighted blanket insert. It has the little loops on the side for you to tie your tassels on. So this project, <laughs> very heavy mentally and physically for me to complete so I really appreciate you clicking on this video and giving me like some watch time because I spent a lot of time <laughs> making this and I'm really satisfied with the results so thank you so much for watching and here is the final reveal Thank you so much for watching my video all the way through. I know that that was a lot. If you want to try to recreate a painting as a quilt, I highly suggest that you do it. It really gives you a greater sense of appreciation for the original composition of the piece, especially the Starry Night. One reason why it's such a compelling composition is just because it has good composition. It's definitely using all of those elements of art and principles of design, and I think that's why so many people are drawn to it. Maybe one day in the future I will recreate the Starry Night in some other medium that isn't frosting or on a paper plate or scraps of fabric on a 6x4 quilt, but for right now I'm moving on from this piece and I can't wait to go to my next project that is hopefully less stressful, no machine needles will break, and I can finish it in less than a month and a half. Please. Thank you so much for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you feel inspired. If you want to keep up with me and any other random crafty things that I'm doing, please feel free to subscribe down below and I will see you with a new video relatively soon. Bye!